Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I'm the Director of Research and Development at Intelligent Concrete, where we specialize in concrete research, development, education, and litigation work. I was not supposed to do a long intro, but I cannot remember that, and I just went with it anyway. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what is concrete flexural strength. And the first thing that we're going to hit on is concrete flexural strength is defined by the ASTM's ACIs as the modulus of rupture, the point at which the uh, extreme most concrete fiber fails in a flexural load or in a bending stress. And when we look at concrete flexural strength, we actually use these huge beams of concrete without steel. And everything we talk about today is going to be purely about the concrete. We're going to ignore the steel. So we go ahead and throw these big old beams together, put in our uh, jig, and break it on our closed loop hydraulic press. And what we find from uh, concrete flexural strength that it, it's dependent on three things. And of course, there's an infinite amount of combinations of possibilities, but the three basic things that concrete, the material relies on for flexural strength, is the hydrated cement matrix, that gray stuff that acts as the binding matrix of our concrete composite. And if we can make our hydrated cement matrix more ductile when it bends under that or when it breaks under that bending load the atomic dislocations will allow for a higher uh, ductility a higher flexural strength so our concrete will be will be able to withstand those larger flexural loads the third thing is going to be the type of aggregate and in our industry we have two basic types of aggregate that we use rounded rock and a crushed rock and the great thing about rounded rock is that it's easier to finish, it consolidates better without the use of mechanical or without the use of a lot of mechanical vibration, but the problem is it's really bad with uh, flexural strength. Cut crushed aggregate, like your granite, your limestone, the pieces actually fit together like puzzle pieces and they work well together, especially with those bending loads. Now, when it also comes to aggregate, something that we're concerned with that ties into the third thing is the dirtiness or the cleanliness of the aggregate. And what we ultimately want from our aggregate is a bond between the aggregate and our hydrated cement matrix, that glue that holds the concrete composite together. When the aggregate is dirty, you won't get a very good bond at that interfacial zone, and instead of the concrete, or excuse me, the hydrated cement matrix and the aggregate working well together under that load and fracturing, um, you see a lot of pullouts, and you can actually see, I don't know if we can zoom into it over here, all these shadows that you see, and these, these pieces of rock, those are shadows or pullouts, and here's where we see fractures of rock, and that's what we really want, a true bond between our hydrated cement matrix and our aggregate, so that the load can transfer from the flexural apparatus through the hydrated cement matrix to the aggregate, and it can all work together to give us our highest flexural load. Um, Let's go ahead and look at a model of what flexural strength is, and this is our fun flexural beam. Um, and when we put our concrete beam in our flexural device, ultimately what happens is the concrete beam ends up smiling. Now, it's not that extreme, but for modeling intents and purposes, if you look at the top fibers of our beam, as the beam smiles under load, you see that those top fibers are getting smaller, those squares are getting smaller. And the same thing for the bottom, as we make that beam smile, those top fibers are getting longer. So what we're seeing is those top fibers are in compression and those bottom fibers are in tension. And that's where our concrete is its weakest. Concrete is a more ceramic or brittle-like material when you compare it to something like steel or aluminum. So that when the concrete goes into that tension fiber in the bottom, do I really need to bring it up like that? <laughs> um, what ends up happening is you get a failure in, those t in that tensile zone, and that's what causes the ultimate failure in flexor or bending. So uh, yeah, anyway, I feel like doing that again. But uh, that's concrete flexural strength. Remember, if you have any questions, please throw them in the comments sections. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check out our YouTube channel for a bunch more videos on concrete how-tos, as well as um, uh, interviews with some of the top 10 concrete rock stars in the industry. Uh, and at this point, have a great day. What was the last thing I had in? Book.
Oh, yeah, we got a concrete book out there called The ABCs of ASR. But anyway, have a great day. Go concrete, beat asphalt.